2005 through 2011 Honda Civic rear drum brake brake job. I'm Brian Nessa from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of changing out the brake shoes on this Honda Civic. So you're gonna to wanna to get the rear of your vehicle up in the air and remove the back tires and pull off the drums. If you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands for safety. So what I like to do is take some brake clean and spray the brake uh, shoes down and all the brake parts down. This prevents the dust from flying in your face when you're working on it. And it also just cleans everything up. I have a bucket underneath below catching all the runoff. So now I'm gonna start removing the brake hold down springs. It takes a special tool, it has a little slot on it that lines up on the little dowel pin on the uh, hold down here. So you line it up and you push it in and you turn it clockwise or counterclockwise until the slot lines up and then you release it and the spring will come off like this. So once you get one side off, you can go ahead and remove the opposite side. So you'll just line up the, uh, the, the pin and then push and then rotate it. And then you can pull the clip off like this. Now I like to use a pair of side cutters and there's a little spring right here. So you're gonna pull downwards. It's going from the top adjuster spring down to the uh, bottom of the, uh, the brake shoe here. And you're gonna pull the spring off. And once you get that spring pulled off, now you can take the shoes and spread them apart on the bottom until they pop out of the little grooves. And then you can pop the uh, adjuster out right here. So you can just pull it apart and then you can pull the lower spring off and set that aside. Now what I do to get the rest of the, uh, the brake shoes out is I kind of slide it off the, the uh, wheel cylinder here. I kind of, so if you watch me, I'll slide it up and off, off the wheel cylinder and I, and I pull it at an angle and just kind of work the spring and adjuster out like this all as, a, all as one assembly. And then you can uh, unhook the springs and then pull it off. Now if you watch me, I flip the uh, shoe over. Now we need to remove the park brake lever here. So it's held on for a horseshoe clip. So there's a pair of pliers that has like a little triangle wedge on it right here. And you line it up with the horseshoe and you squeeze it and it spreads the horseshoe open. So you'll, you'll take the pliers and you'll line it up with the, uh, the open end of the horseshoe clip. And then you'll squeeze the pliers and then as you squeeze it, it flares the horseshoe clip open. Sometimes you need to use a, a flathead screwdriver to help pick it off also. So once you get the uh, clip removed, you're going to slide it off. There's going to be a washer underneath it also. So keep those all together and put those aside. Now you can slip your brake uh, shoe off the park brake arm here. So you want to pay attention how the little dowel rod that goes through the, uh, the shoe here is uh, orientated. You're going to take this dowel out and transfer it over to your new brake shoes. So you're going to transfer it over to your new brake shoes. But before we get to that step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep the backing plate here. I'm going to use a little wire brush and clean up the, uh, the mounting spots. So I'm going to wire brush everything off and make sure it's all free of debris and stuff. And then also I'm inspecting to make sure that there's no grooves on these uh, spots where the brake shoes ride. Sometimes they develop these grooves in there. And if the grooves are severe, you may be required to replace the backing plate. It can make the brake shoes do uh, funny things like, like pop noises and also uh, stick. So after you get them all cleaned up, then I take a little bit of Seal Glide uh, grease. This is the grease that we use here. And I put a little small amount on the uh, mounting points here. And that prevents it from uh, making any squeak noises. When you uh, hit the brake shoes, it'll, it'll squeak sometimes if you uh, don't put the grease on there. And also you can uh, inspect the wheel cylinders here, make sure, that, make sure that they're not leaking and they're in good condition. As you can see here, I'm peeling the boots back and looking inside to make sure that no fluid is running out. And then, uh, then you can just put the boots back on over the uh, wheel cylinders. They just fit on a little groove here. And if they're leaking or anything like that, you would obviously replace them. And I would recommend replacing them in pairs, both left and right side. So you want to also make sure that the grooves on the wheel cylinders are straight up and down before you install the brake shoes. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish up clean, uh, cleaning this up and, and lubricating all the mounting points. So on this vehicle, the brake shoes are the same on the front and back. On some of them, the shoes are slightly bigger on the, on the back towards the rear of the car and smaller towards the front of the car. But on this one, they're both identical. So now we're going to take our dowel pin and put it through the brake shoe. So if you look how the uh, brake shoe is... Uh, facing it's kind of facing backwards so i put the dowel pin like that now i flip it over and it's going to line up like this so i put the dowel pin through and now i'm going to put the horseshoe clip and the washer on first and put the washer on and then the horseshoe clip on and then once i put the horseshoe clip on 
squeeze it with a pair of pliers and that'll make it nice and secure. It is a little bit uh, of a challenge to put the, uh, the horseshoe clip on. You kind of have to hold three things at one time and press it and then line up the pliers and squeeze. It's a little bit of challenging to do it, but uh, a little patience and you'll get it. So like I said, you'll grab the tip of the horseshoe clip with the pliers and give them a little squeeze and bend them inwards until it clamps around the dowel pin. Now that that's secure, we're going to take the, the whole brake shoe here, swing it upwards and line it up with the wheel cylinder with a little groove right here. Then we're going to reach around the back and we're going to slide the hold down pin through the hole on the brake shoe like this. And now you're going to hold it with one forefinger and your thumb, hold it together like this. Now you're going to take the clip and you're going to uh, line it up with the, uh, the dowel pin or the, the hold down pin here. You'll line it up like this and you'll take the, your tool, press it in until you, it goes through the hole of the clip. And then once it goes through, then you twist it clockwise or counterclockwise until it lines back up with the groove and, and holds into place like this. Now I'm going to take our brake adjuster here and I'm going to take it all apart. And, uh, and lubricate it and make sure everything is free and moving uh, freely. If any of these parts are, are not working the way they should be, you need to order a hardware kit and change it out. That includes the springs and everything. So you wanna take this all apart and uh, you wanna put a little dab of those, that grease on there and get it uh, nice and clean and lubed up and make sure everything's working freely. And you only want to put a small amount of the grease on there. If you put too much on it, it'll collect dust and dirt and it'll actually cause it to jam up and, and malfunction. So you want to just work all the grease in and now you can screw it back together. I like to screw it all the way in or close to all the way in. Now that you got it reassembled, you're going to take the, the uh, side that has a little step here and you're going to line it up with the groove in the park arm right here, the park brake arm here. You want the one with the longer arm facing towards the outside, the shorter side facing inwards. Now we're going to take our other brake shoe here and we're going to line it up uh, with the, uh, the spring hole for the bottom is on the bottom and then it has the groove on the top. So now we're going to take the little uh, adjuster spoon here and put it in the, gro in the groove here. And now, now what we're going to do is take the uh, the top larger spring here and we're going to put it through underneath the wheel cylinder and attach it onto the uh, the brake shoe that's already mounted on there. And so it's going to mount like this where the majority of the spring is mounted towards the uh, towards the back like this. And then the, uh, the, with the longer slender, slender portion of the spring will mount onto the uh, opposite spring. And uh, I'll, if you don't can't remember you can always refer to the opposite side before taking it apart so we're going to hook it on like this now what you're going to do is you're going to put your thumb on the wheel cylinder so it doesn't pop out and you're going to you're going to take the uh the tip of the uh, brake shoe and line it up with a wheel cylinder and rotate it around around you also want to make sure that this spoon is pointing uh, upwards towards the uh, brake adjuster right there so you want to make sure it's lined up right now if you look i'm putting my finger through the hole on the uh the hub there to, to line up the uh, park brake adjuster with the groove in the on the brake shoe and once you get that all lined up now you can go ahead and take the uh, the smaller spring here and hook it on the bottom and you're going to squeeze uh, pull it forward slightly and you're going to squeeze it inwards and then hook the two uh, shoes together on the spring and then you're going to pull the uh, the shoe outward until it lines up with the mounting spot on the bottom of the uh, backing plate after you get that pulled into place, you want to also uh, make sure that the, the shoes are lined up with the top of the wheel cylinders. Now you can put the uh, hold down pin through the backing plate and, and through the uh, brake shoe and put the clip on. So you'll line it up. You'll take the tool and press it in until it goes through the slot and turn it clockwise or counterclockwise until it lines up with the slot and holds the uh, shoe down into place. Now we're going to take the spring that mounted on the self adjuster arm here and hook it onto the arm. And then we're going to pull it down and, and hook it onto the bottom hole on the uh, brake shoe. I just use my side cutters here and I, uh, I pull it down. And I'm not squeezing very tightly. Just pull it down and hook it onto the shoe. And now I'm just going to center up the shoes uh, left and right. Make sure everything is centered up. So I measured up my drums and they're perfectly in spec. So I went ahead and machined them. So you can ma machine them, have them machined, or replace them with brand new drums. Now we're going to position our drums over the hub here and we're going to check our, our adjustment. So most likely it's going to be way out, it's going to be way too free. So what we're going to do is uh, uh, take a little screwdriver or adjusting spoon and, uh, and we're going to click the, uh, the adjuster here. It only goes one way, the, the self-adjusting spoon prevents it from going uh, one way. So I'm clicking it out 
quite a few threads here because I was all the way in. We were way out of adjustment here. So now I'm going to slide the drum on and spin it. And what I'm looking for is a slight drag on the inside of the drum. And, uh, and I, I keep pulling the drum on and off until I uh, achieve that light drag. So as you put it on there, you make sure it's fully seated. You're going to rotate the drum. You're going to feel for that light drag on there. If you should also hear the shoes making contact with the inside of the drum as you're rotating it around. So you're going to keep adjusting it until it's just right. When it be, makes small adjustments, it's it's easier to adjust up than it is to unadjust it. Unadjusting it can be a pain in the butt. So you don't want it too tight. So you want to slide it on there until you feel that light drag. And as you spin it, you only get about a half turn or so. So now you're going to duplicate the same exact process on the opposite side. I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. I'm Brian Essick from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.